when you cut into a person, you risk introducing infections. So you want the highest level of antibiotic at that moment, but thereafter, with proper aseptic technique, there should not be significant risk. The great thing about these guidelines is they're evidence-based and they're clear. We need to be careful not to overuse antibiotics and we need to use hygiene, hand washing, disinfection properly. They tell us how to do this. What is important from the antibiotic angle is that it tells us that we should give them before the operation to get the maximal amount in the blood to kill bugs at the time of incision but that they don't need to be used afterwards, except of course if the patient has an infection. No one's saying that if you get an infection later, you shouldn't have antibiotics. We're just saying use prophylaxis prevention effectively, which is at that period, don't drive the development of resistance, don't waste antibiotics when you don't need them. Importantly, if people abide by the guidelines, then it will reduce the use of antibiotics and make them rational use. But we just have to raise awareness and make sure that nationally and locally, people talk about them and then put them into practice. And that will save lives because antibiotics in humans or animals or the environment drive mutations in bugs, which mean that we end up with drug-resistant infections. So using them properly, as recommended in this guideline, will protect the antibiotics, make them last longer and save lives.